okay so before we continue with our validation let's come back to the sheet and see what all we covered so we have seen about building page object design pattern in our last lecture so these are the remaining items and i will try to cover how to update configuration changes in cypress.json file in this lecture so our approach here is to do some validation on that e-commerce app as part of that we will learn the best practices of implementing framework okay so it's like parallel track journey one way to learn the test cases and the way to implement the best practices of framework okay now we thought to complete this end-to-end -end scenario right now we selected two products and we clicked on checkout button in our last test so after that i don't want to do validations at this moment as i said i will do it in coming lecture so i will just continue by clicking on the checkout button okay so how to click on that so as i said you can take contains if you know the checkout text correctly so cy dot contains but when you are practicing please drive it from your page object file as as shown for the first two pages okay so this clicks on the checkout button and we will reach this page and now this is a tricky part this is auto suggestive drop down right this is not select drop down just to use select method of cypress so how to handle this it's very simple nothing any fancy here now get the locator for this edit box we have id so i can use hash country to form a css for that cy dot country and then i will type indian okay so i n d i a so if i type like this it is taking few seconds and then it's giving me the option to select India. So to click on this, we need locator of this option, right? So right click and inspect again. You have anchor A called India here. So to write a CSS, you have to travel from your parent to child. So if you don't want that headache, you can use your Cypress to automatically generate the CSS for you. Okay, it's taking few seconds to display. Thereafter, you can actually spy on this. That's it. You got your CSS. So you can simply copy this copy to clipboard please i don't know why i'm not able to copy but yeah you got that so once you type india then the next css is what you got from your cypress test runner and then click basically you need to click after you this option got popped up so one thing you need to observe here that after you select country, it is taking at least five to seven seconds, I guess, to display this edit box. So make sure that your command do not time out by the time this option is displaying. Okay, by default, if you go to your test runner, come to the settings configuration so default command timeout will be four seconds if you remember in the beginning of the course i have explained that you can modify your default command timeout from cypress.json file okay you can modify all these behaviors from that specific file so basically cypress will wait until the another element is displayed based upon how much timeout you give okay if it is six seconds then it will wait for six seconds so 
by default when you check in your machine if you don't change this cypress suggesting us four seconds but in practical in real time when we work with frameworks we give up to 10 seconds okay we never know uh, if the server goes slow when multiple people are working in our QA environments so it's up to you what time you give based upon your project settings so as per my uh, experience for this particular radio but uh, drop down selection it might take around 5 to 8 seconds based upon how busy that server is okay so i want to go back to my cypress.json and i will change the default command timeout to 8 seconds so that it is applicable now to my test you might be wonder like how would i handle explicit weight by only targeting this specific drop down to wait for 8 seconds all remaining 4 seconds that's how we do in selenium right if you use explicit weight you can set timeout only for that specific um, drop down not for your entire framework so in cypress they were suggesting us to set the timeout from this configuration file only but if you think that you want to apply this timeout only for specific test case not for all your test cases then you can override this behavior in your test okay so let me show their documentation on this cypress so configuration there is a chance to override the behavior what you have in this json file when you declare this command in your cypress.json that will be applicable to your entire framework but if you want to make that only specific to one particular test then you know look at here cypress.config this scope is only for your current spec file so if you feel that this command timeout is required only for one single test then you need to add that cypress.config command to your test and let them know that for this specific test i need to work on eight seconds at least okay so that you can keep your cypress.json to four seconds or six seconds but only for this specific spec file you can increase up to 8 seconds okay this is how you can explicitly declare for your specific specific spec file but you cannot declare that here and this will not be applicable to everywhere if you declare in spec file it's applicable to that specific point only now let's say um, you want to click on shop tab button and from that specific point you feel that it's taking time to load instead of declaring it globally declare this just before the shop button so that command timeout 8 seconds is being applied from this step only so this is how you can bring explicit weight mechanism in cypress okay so that will continue until your test is finished starting from 28th line it will make your command to wait for 8 seconds so this is how you can override your behavior from your cypress.json file but this is the centralized one but in my suggestion you should have only one timeout across your application and that should drive your whole framework if you keep on keeping timeouts each different number for each different spec file then you know that would not turn into consistent way of writing a framework if you think that few scenarios taking more time then it might be you have to reach out to your development team to understand why the flow and timeouts are different to each and every page okay so that because there will be common server for entire your application your server may not behave slow for one specific page and fast for another page it might behave but that should be overall server behavior it's not about one single component so it's up to you but i would suggest you to have some global timeout like this 
Ideally, it's allowed up to 10 seconds. In frameworks, you can put timeout up to 10 seconds, but more than 10 seconds is something which we need to think about, but up to 10, it's fine. Okay, so this is how you can override your behavior if you want for specific component. All right, so the overriding behavior in your test, you may not see it here. Whatever you see it here should come from your cypress.json file. If you override something here, that will not reflect, but it will take care in your test while executing. And tomorrow, if you want to change fixture folder location, right now, if you simply call cypress.fixture example, Cypress automatically going to fixture folder and looking into this um, hierarchy without doing any import. But if you think that fixture folder should be in other place, and if your Cypress wants to detect automatically where exactly it's located, then you have to give your new folder path here. Right now, it's a predefined, but if you want to declare these fixtures with another name, like data driven, then let Cypress know by setting up the environment variable. You can set it again in cypress.json, add fixture folder as a key, just like how you did and the value, give the new value and save it. At runtime, all the behavior, whatever you put it here, will be overridden by the default settings, and then Cypress will look into the actual folder, whatever you want. So similarly, you can look all about other configurations, what you define here, where to take look for screenshots. Okay, I have not yet discussed about screenshots, video, everything, so, this is the default viewport. When browser got opened, this is the height and width defined by Cypress to automate. If you want to modify your view settings of your browser, then you can change the values from your cypress.json. Okay, so basic idea here is to explain you that you can override the behavior from this file. Okay, but if you want to have a specific behavior to the spec file, then this is how you can handle it so that it's applicable to the remaining steps in your test.